I have spoken to everybody and I don't know what else I can say. Just please, please help us. Please. The three months in captivity have taken their toll on Rachel Chandler. I need to be with Paul. Yes. It's, we are husband and wife. And yes. We have always been together. Right. And we look after one another. Course, and we're, yes. we're now... I'm 55, I'm 56 years old soon. Yes. And my husband is 60 years old. We are not young people. <laughs> Correct. And we... These people are treating us so cruelly. In isolation, away from her husband Paul, a 24-hour armed guard, and constantly moved around the Somali bush. The strain shows. This is Paul and Rachel before they were captured. And this is them now. The weight loss is stark. Rachel and Paul are kept apart so the pirates can cause the Chandlers as much anguish as possible. The doctor, the man in the orange shirt, has been given permission by the pirates to examine the Chandlers. He tells me he's concerned about their state. Nick Davis is an experienced pirate negotiator. He's worried about the messages the pirates are receiving. They need to know, they need to understand that they can deal with one person, they can negotiate, they can effectively agree a lump sum, agree a handover method, there'd be an airdrop of sorts of, uh, of some cash, and then uh, Paul and Rachel will be given a boat to leave the beach and to go a couple of miles offshore, and then for the uh, British Royal Navy to go and pick them up and bring them home. These pictures are distressing, but they serve a purpose. It may have been a mission getting this tape out of Somalia and into Kenya, but it's what the pirates would have wanted. It reminds the world of the Chandler's plight, and it keeps up pressure on the British government. After more than 100 days in captivity, there is no sign of an immediate release. And for Rachel Chandler, the agony of separation from her husband Paul will continue. I'm feeling so lonely and desperate and finding it difficult to sleep and carry on through the day. Ashish Joshi, Sky News, Nairobi.